This community of care is created through our work and our time together and our commitment to one another. This is our covenant to walk together in loving fellowship to share our hopes and values. As we pass these baskets, we thank you for your generous gifts which support the work of this religious community and Unitarian Universalism in the world at large. As a reflection of our values, we are pleased to participate in the Change for Change program. The coins you place in the basket today will support the work of nonprofits in and around, around the Grand Valley. With gratitude, we will now receive today's offering. This congregation is a community of ourselves. Its energy and resources are our energy and resources. Its wealth is what we share. As we contribute to its life, we affirm our lives within it. Let us sing together number 1014 in your till hymnal, Standing on the Side of Love. Thank you. 
All right. Uh, can you guys still hear me? Okay. I invite you to take a look around. Just look around this space, look around, see the people. What you see here are hundreds of hours of volunteer work to put this faith community together, to keep this building up and going, to, um, to be who we are as Unitarian Universalists in this Grand Valley. What you see here is the generous gift of time, talent, and treasure from every person here in this room, every person joining us on Zoom, and so many people who are not here with us today, but are part of our heart and our loving community. This is a faith community. And, you know, sometimes I'm, I get the benefit of being sometimes the face, you know, if we're going to end up on the news. A lot of times it's my face on the news. or So I sometimes get the credit, but I am not this community. This, you are this community, and that's what it means to be a community. And so today, this Flower Communion Sunday is my favorite. It's my, one of my, well, I say that for the water. I, I, don't, I say it a lot. But it's one of my favorite times to be here because we just get to look at each other, acknowledge each other, and come together in gratitude for everything that we have created and, and built together and been part of this year. And so this year we've had 52 worship services put together with our amazing music director, with our amazing director of programming, with Trent, who's in the background there, actually not working today because now we have Corey, and, um, and all of you bringing your wonderful voices in your sermons. So we've done that. But we've done so much more for, for many, many years since COVID, we were the, the host of Grand Junction Mutual Aid. And because of what started in 2020 with two little tables in our parking lot, because we said yes, it has turned into an amazing nonprofit around the Grand Valley and Stephania has done TED Talks and now she's interviewed all over the world because of what Grand Junction Mutual Aid has done. We don't get credit for that necessarily, but we said yes to an idea. We said yes to a seed and then somebody took that seed and made it flower and now there's a full resource center down off of Pitkin, so they're not with us anymore, but we helped that beautiful flower blossom and bloom. Maya put together a number with local film people doing an amazing film ser series on things that really, really matter. And that was here in this building, learning about the sheep herders, learning about how women find their voices, I can't even, uh, the planting seeds in, in Ukraine. I mean, some amazing films. And if you haven't had a chance to come to the film series that we've been putting on, they're really, really amazing. So we've done that. But then more than that, just every Sunday, we have people show up and smile and greet each other and show up for each other in the joy and in the sorrow. And that's what I talk about, that life is what it is. It's beautiful and it's sad and it's joyful and then we get angry and then we come back together and we are community. And so I just want to say thank you today. And so this is our time to really say thank you to each other. So if you are a person who showed up in any way this year as part of our UUCG 
the leadership. I invite you to stand up or raise your hand. If you're on the TLC or the board, if you preached a sermon or helped maintain the building in any capacity, raise your hand. If you volunteered for food and brought food or just uh, showed up and ate, raise your hand. <laughs> One of the things I forgot to mention is that for the second year in a row now, we did the uh, winter emergency shelter program in January, the coldest time of the year. We opened up our basement for 16 uh, men to sleep downstairs for two weeks. We fed them dinner every night, breakfast every morning, and made sure that they were safe for some of the coldest parts of the winter, and, and I'm proud of that. So if you were part of that, raise your hand or most of most of us so what I'd like to do is just I'm gonna say these words and then I'm gonna ask you to just kind of look around each time and what you guys are gonna say is and so we thank you so when there was a need you came forward and so we thank you in the nighttime or daytime, on weekends, and even in the coldest, darkest part of the year, you helped. And so we thank you. Elected and duly appointed, or quietly, anonymously, and unbidden, you did what needed doing. And so we thank you. Sometimes with the help of many hands, other times alone, you worked. And so we thank you. You gave your time, talent, treasure, and voice for the life of the congregation. And so we thank you. Your families and loved ones supported you in your efforts, worried for you when things piled up, and perhaps grumbled at you for the extent of your commitments. And so we thank you. For all things great and small you have given this congregation, we take time today to recognize, to thank you, and to honor you. And so we thank you. We are not what we are without every person here. And so I thank all of you. Part of being part of a faith community is a lot of times you get to be on a team and um, teams come and they go and we, we have a newly active membership team that is, is kind of small but over the years we haven't been as active with our membership so we are um, welcoming some of our new members who feel like they might not be quite as new because they may have signed the book a year or two ago but haven't actually been recognized so we do once or twice a year always try to welcome officially our new members and so um, we are taking the time to welcome some of our new members today being part of a spiritual community means you get to come to a place at least I hope in this spiritual community you get to be who you are authentically are not who other people imagine you to be. Hopefully, we have nurtured a place where you can bring your joys, your struggles, your hopes, your dreams, and your frustrations, your fears. And it's a place that you can bring your insecurities and your vulnerabilities. You don't have to pretend to be somebody you're not and nobody here is going to try to change you. What is important to recognize is that we all have different needs out of a spiritual home. We come to this faith community with different strengths and skills to contribute, and this is a community in which one size does not fit all because who wants the same size anyways, right? So, what does it mean to join a church or this community? Why become part of a faith community? 
Well, it's partly because in a faith community, you get to bring your heart, soul, body, and mind. And so those of you who have signed the book of membership to become an official member this year or in the past year or two, we welcome you. And I invite you to just be who you are, bring who you are, because that's all any of us are doing anyways. And why would we want to be any different than that? And so over the years, people have come to me and they've said, well, I don't, I don't know what I have to contribute. And I really mean this, that sometimes just even showing up, making eye contact with somebody and giving them a smile is exactly what was needed for that person in that point of time. And we might not even know it, but if we didn't just show up being who we are, we wouldn't have been there for that person who needed that point of contact. And so we talk about time, talent, and treasure. And there are times in our lives when we can step up and we can offer what we have because we have it in us. And then there are times in our lives when we have to step back because we just don't have a whole lot to give. And it's our time to receive. And that's just as wonderful and beautiful as when we step up. And then we step back, and then maybe we'll be ready to step up again. And that's, to me, what it means to be part of this community. There's nobody keeping attendance or keeping tabs. It's, um, it's just always open door, open arms, be who you are, and we welcome you here. So. With that, I would like to formally welcome our new members. And I'm hoping, I'm really hoping we didn't forget anybody because we tried, I think we didn't forget anybody, but we never do everything perfectly. So um, uh, our new members, and uh, either Peg or Debbie, do you want to hand out some the flowers? So we have Linda Wetzel, and she's she's in the back. I do you see? I'll bring it back. Yeah, she'll bring it to you. And Sarah and David. Ah, uh, one for them. Ah, uh, and then Patricia Deckert. Jane and Sachin. Marilyn Raymond. Doug Price. He's not here. Leslie Atwood. Tom Acker. He's there in the yellow. Hans Clausen. I don't think Hans is here today. Brian and Cynthia Sims. Liz Elam. Jennifer James. Penny Hopkins, Catherine Blackward, and Sherry, Sherry Tice. Oh, there's Penny.
would like uh, the congregation just to give a formal, loving welcome to all of our new members. And you don't only have to join once a year. Uh, we, we joke about the way to become a member is to have a conversation with me or Peg or Debbie, and you sign the book. Um, <laughs> And it's really kind of that easy. So if you think that you might like to become a member, everybody is welcome. And there are people who just don't join things, don't join organizations, and have been friends of this congregation for decades. And that is really OK, too. So we welcome you all here. Now we get to go into the fun part of the service. Um, like I sort of massacred my story with the kids, <laughs> the Unitarian Universalist Flower Communion Service, which we are about to celebrate, was originated in 1923 by Dr. Norbert Chopek, founder of the modern Unitarian movement in Czechoslovakia. On the last Sunday before the summer recess of the Unitar Unitarian Church in Prague, all of the children and adults participated in this colorful ritual, which gives concrete expression to the humanity-affirming principles of our liberal faith. When the Nazis took control of Prague in 1940, they found Dr. Capek's gospel of the inherent worth and beauty of every human person to be, as Nazi court records show, quote, too dangerous to the Reich to be allowed to live. Dr. Kepek was sent to Dachau, where he was killed in the next year in the Nazi medical experiments. This gentle man suffered a cruel death, but his me message of human hope and decency lives on through his flower communion, which is widely celebrated today. It is noble and meaning-filled ritual we are about to create. So the flowers in the ceremony this morning help us symbolize the love that is hidden deep inside us. The flowers are beautiful, and so are the feelings of love among people. And the beauty cannot be measured, and so what I invite you to do is um, just come up and take a flower and stick it in the chalice. If you have a hope or a desire for the community, I invite you to just express your hope or your blessing. So. Tobias, Tobias and Phoebe and I brought three flowers today. And the first flower represents our great grandpa um, because he like loves zinnias. Yep. And then I don't think this microphone's working, but um, and then the other flower represents Testing, testing, there we go. Okay, so the other flower represents um, Grandpa Arthur's wife, Pat, my grandmother. And both of their spirits uh, travel with me and have always been with me here um, every moment of the way, all the time that I've spent in this church. And then our other flowers are petunias that remind us of um, the kid's grandmother, Grandma Lori, Paul's mother, who we lost three years ago. And so because of their importance in, to us, we're sharing we're sharing these flowers today. And you're welcome to just come and put a flower and decorate with us too.
check. I put one in for my mom. I put, a, I put a rose in for my husband, Gary, and I'm hoping he will be here for our 10th anniversary celebration that he was uh, very active in, in building this church. I would like to dedicate mine to our young budding musicians in hopes that you keep forever growing and blooming in your, all of your abilities. Just before he was put to death in Dachau, Dr. Kapek wrote this prayer, reflecting on his own life and the state of his spirit. It is worthwhile to live and fight courageously for sacred ideals. Blow my soul's evil wind. Oh, blow ye evil winds into my body's fire. My soul you'll never unravel. Even though disappointed a thousand times or fallen in the fight and everything would seem worthless, I have lived and missed eternity. Be grateful, my soul. My life was worth living. Those who overcome the fetters giving wing to the mind is entering into the golden age of the victorious. Let us sing together the fire of commitment. Please rise in body or spirit.
Extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitments. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. now in peace. Amen. We have coffee and conversation. We have an introvert escape hatch and we also have some good potluck food. So the congregational meeting will begin at 1215. If you're on Zoom, feel free to log off. I'm going to keep this meeting open or just stay online. <laughs>